How's it going? Woo! My name is Jagger. Thank you for coming. We are going to do some crazy stuff today talking about someone's shitty pitch. I can't assume that your pitch is shitty, so I don't want to be a presumptuous, but we're going to talk about shitty pitches in general and how you can improve your pitch. Now, I don't know how good your idea is, so I can't critique that. However, you need to communicate that idea to investors, right? That you need to get their buy-in on your vision. And to do that, you need an amazing pitch deck. And most pitch decks suck. I see them all the time. They're terrible every single time. So the best way to show this is we're going to go and show you other people's pitch decks, make fun of them together, fix and say, how do we fix it? How would we make it better? And then show you some good examples. So it's sort of like, uh, play along with me as we go through this adventure of making good pitch decks together. So if we can pull the slides up, um, this is what you're facing, right? This is the international funded startup survival curve. Um, assuming that your company has received seed funding, that's why it's 100% in the beginning, Looking forward, there's a pretty big cliff. That's a pretty big cliff of companies that need to get to the next round of funding. So in Series A, you've got about a 35% chance. Series B, of the people that make it to Series A, about 25%, and it goes down from there. So you have a lot of competition to make your pitch awesome. Uh, well, you're probably saying to yourself, well, you know, a lot of these companies probably exit. They probably get acquired. Actually, only about 15% of companies in each stage after uh, Series B actually goes and gets acquired or exits. So a lot of those companies are going out of business. It really does come down to, in a lot of ways, your pitch. Because unless you know the investor, unless you find a stupid investor, they want to see your pitch and be convinced by your pitch. So we're going to go through 10 tenets of a shitty pitch. You should not do some of the things that you're going to see today. First one, complex concepts. Now, your idea can be super complicated. You can have some really complicated ideas. That's totally fine. What you don't want to do is have your deck be super complicated to reflect the really complicated ideas. It doesn't have to be just a tech. Like, here's an example of a timeline slide. Timelines are really complicated. Life is really complicated. What you don't do is put all that shit into the timeline in your pitch deck. Now, this guy raised $18 million, right? So with this deck, so you know, I can only critique it so far, but still, you don't need to tell me about how your mom started the company. You don't need to tell me about how you're in debt and how sad things were. You don't need to tell me that you bought the domain name. Like, I got it. Like, all those things are kind of obvious because you have it already. So focus on the things that matter, right? Hiding in this timeline are actually really important things about like when you raise the money and when you start charging for products. You should go and specify all of that. Give me that information right up front. Get rid of all the unnecessary BS. Here's another example. Nutanix, they raised $140 million with this deck. So if your deck looks better than this, good job because this person raised $140 million. However, it's a terrible slide. This is the Newtonix distributed file system. It's some virtual machine, something or other with terrible stock art like that you found on, on like default Windows stuff. It's awful. I couldn't tell you what the hell they do. I don't know what the value prop is here. It's up to the investor to figure it out. And even if you're super technical, it's still probably not really clear. Do these boxes actually line up with the things above it? What's the splash thing going on at the bottom? Like it feels like you instantly updated your slide. So be smart about how you're using visuals. There is probably a better way to communicate this through talking about the value is because when that associate at that investment firm looks at this slide, they're probably gonna go next. Now here's the, another one, here's Airbnb. This is a good slide because it's talking about a pretty complicated concept about what my target, uh, TAM is, right? My, my total adjustable market, but it's obvious. Well, there's 2 billion trips being booked. That's a lot. Today, Airbnb does about 84 million of them. And this was back when they were raising their seed round back in 2009. Like, great, I see the attraction. I see the potential. This seems like a good company I should invest in. 
we probably should all have invested in the Airbnb back in 2009. And this is what a good slide looks like. It's easy to understand. I don't need the rest of the deck to understand the concept. It's pretty straightforward. Here's another good one. This, this is a company called uh, Caddy, which went and uh, raised a, a pretty small round, but still it's pretty obvious what they're trying to do. Golfers want more information from golf courses. Golf courses want more information from golfers. Makes a lot of sense. Well, I didn't need the rest of the deck to figure this out. As an investor, I need to figure out, do I think there's enough golfers maybe to justify this? Are there enough golf courses to figure out if this business model makes sense? But it's not complicated for me to figure out. Even if there's a lot of machine learning and matching and algorithms behind the scenes making this work, I don't actually need to go and see all that on a single slide. So that was the first tenet. Keep it simple, even if your concepts are complicated. Next up, unreadable text. How many of you have ever seen a, uh, next slide, um, a, a financial slide, right? You need to put it in there. Everyone says, yeah, you need to put your financials in there. So here's an example. Like, what does this tell you? It, it's hard to figure it out. I guess these little numbers are $10,000 a month things. There's a story about how there's two years here. Is this two years in the future? Is the last two years? What's your, like, what other costs you have? This seems to be mostly about people. Is there revenue? Do you anticipate revenue? Like, there's all these questions, and all this slide did was make it confusing for the investors. So all I feel like reading this is, I don't actually think you understand your business. I don't think you understand what your cost structure is. I don't know if you are anticipating revenue or not. Like, these are really big red flags, and you're just gonna, get, if you get the pitch meeting, they're just gonna hammer you on this slide saying, like, what else? Like, what, like, what does this even mean? So don't just put in slides because you know you have to. Put in slides because you have to add value with the thing you're adding. So what is the story, even with your financial slide, that you're trying to tell? Uh, here's one, Wedding Lovely. So this is an email service. It basically sends you emails to sort of help you through getting the, the, through the wedding process. And they put this huge timeline up about all the things that they're going to go and email you about. Now, you wouldn't know that unless they told you the context. Otherwise, it just looks like a big wedding timeline slide. It doesn't really tell you anything you don't already know. But let's say that you're pitching this to an investor, and like, you're telling a story about how this is about all these touch points that you're going to have with these customers, and how cool is that? But meanwhile, I'm reading this slide. So I'm trying to see, figure out what each of these things are. I get stuck on month six wondering, what does it mean sending people STDs? Like, I don't get it. Um, and that's confusing. Um, and, and so and, and now I've totally missed the pitch, right? Like I'm too busy reading all these words on the slide. So be careful with overly complicated. You could have easily done this with bullets. You should have talked about touch points. You should have talked about engagement at those touch points. Um, you could have easily summarized this and not been so distracting. Here's a pretty good one. Uh, this is, again, it's a little wordy, but at least the content is valuable. So I can understand what it is that you are doing with this funding. What funding have you done, like, used so far? Maybe don't use full sentences. You can consolidate it down to bullets. But fundamentally, this is giving you some interesting details around why you need the money, and it's relevant to me as the investor. So pretty good. Next up, confusing visuals. This is my favorite. So Square raised $100 million with this deck, $100 million. This is one of my least favorite slides that I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to try not to rant for 20 minutes on it. First, if you put a circle, the circle of life slide, the cycle thing in there, make it actually a cycle. Like, if you're, like read it alone. Like, you need to read it. Huge market opportunity in mobile payments leads to inspiring and experienced management team. Leads to sold or solid business, leads to defensible business, leads to high valuation, leads to huge market opportunity, leads to new management team. Like it's, it's weird, doesn't make any sense. These things have to build off of each other and people put these graphics in to make it, make it pretty, but it's not, it just gets confusing. This needs, if you put a cycle slide, do a cycle. Even worse, don't stick another set of icons or, or imagery next to it, which is another cascading thing talking about Again, simple pricing, 2.75%, leads to zero friction, leads to free iPad app. Like, it doesn't make sense. So think these things through, and don't use purple gradients, annoying. All right, here's another circle. This is now Buffer, talking about the competitive landscape. 
tell me, which, are, which of these icons is the, in fact, competitive uh, company of Buffer? Who knows? Is it Facebook, LinkedIn, Google? Like, holy shit, good luck. Like, that sounds really hard. Is it all these little white circles around the circle? Or is Buffer just in the two circles up here? Why well, I see their icon twice. Is it on the bottom because they aren't very good at intelligent sharing, but it's at the top because they're really good at sharing platforms? Like, it's a very confusing slide. And when you are giving this pitch, you might be able to explain what this means. But when you're emailing this pitch, and you always will, you have to email this pitch to an associate. They're going to read this and say, you don't understand your competitive landscape. You don't understand who you are actually competing against. Or the market is way too big, and you're just going to get washed out and ignored. Um, it's too hard to differentiate. So be careful as you're going through, especially on that competitive slide. Here is a good example of good visuals. So here, I don't know anything about trim, um, but I guess they do some micro business insurance. Businesses that are small need insurance. That makes a lot of sense to me. And what do they do? They take things from 10 weeks down to three minutes. That sounds like a big improvement. 35 pages to digital. One umbrella policy instead of seven policies. All these things are really understand. I don't even need the rest of the deck. Sounds compelling. A lot of micro businesses out there. I'm going to want to hear more. And they raise $125,000 off this deck. Cool. Too wordy. People love words. Do not make me read novels when I'm looking at these decks. Here's Foursquare. How many of you still use Foursquare? Ah, you admitted it. I saw you. All right. Uh, so Foursquare, it's a thing where you can check in. Did you check in? Come on, give me, tell me you checked in. All right, so here we are. We're look, what is Foursquare? It gives me a novel. I have to read this whole thing. It's talking about two people in New York City. It's talking about iPhones and APIs. It should have been a lot more concise. Cut it down. Like, yeah, you, you think they got in and say gamification, but game mechanics, what are things? There's too many words. Make it nice and concise. And by the way, look at your logo. Like, let's use this as an opportunity. Like, what the hell does that logo mean? The ball, like I missed the ball. If I use Foursquare, I missed the ball. Like I don't really get it. Just be careful about your logo. Have it make sense and have it feel like it's a good fit for your business. Here's a great idea. Here's where fewer words matter. We make airlines pay you $600 for screwing up your flight. What? That sounds great. I want to read the whole deck. I don't even care. I just want to know how do you do it? That sounds interesting to me. I'd invest in that company. Like, that's super exciting, and that's the power of fewer words, because you don't have to tell me a whole story about how you're going to do it. Just tease me in. Let me give me a little hint as to why this is cool. Uh, so here's another example. It asked me a simple question. Do you understand you know, if, you're, if this is a safe site or not? Sure I do. I'm, I'm a smart person. I see that. But you don't when it's on Slack. You don't when it's on Twitter, and you're looking at a browser or mobile app. Hmm, that's true. That's weird. How are you going to fix it? So simple questions draw me in, help me understand fewer words are always better. Audience not in mind. Woo, so this is a big one. This is a little controversial one. We're going to get into it, though. Be careful about who you're sending these decks to. Be careful, because you don't necessarily know if they're going to get offended by what you've done here. Here's a good example. Three million rich Chinese people want first class health care. I'm going to assume poor Chinese health People want good health care too. Middle class people, just every person wants good health care. So it's kind of weird that we're specifying these specific people. You lay it over a picture of China, which makes me think it's a big TAM, but only 3 million people, I start getting concerned about actually how many people might get value out of your application. Even worse, you've chosen red font and blue font for unknown reasons. You have a lowercase people when everything else is uppercase. Like, why is that? You have rich as a capital letter. Like, there's just, this feels like you threw it together in 30 seconds. So just be careful about how you're communicating these slides. Um, they're still operating. We don't know if they actually raised any funding. Um, another example, these three fellows, gangster, gangster. When you're an investor, the last thing you want is like, hi, I'm a gangster, otherwise known as a thief and a robber. Give us money. We're cool. Don't worry about it. So this just reeks of bro attitude. It's not what like, investors want to see. If you do find an investor who is interested in this imagery, probably a bad sign. Like It's actually kind of a red flag. So not awesome that you decided to put this in here. The second thing is, who cares what you look like? It doesn't matter. So yeah, you've got a nice smile, 
that's not actually what you want to see on a team slide, right? The thing that's most important on this slide is the little teeny blue letters down the bottom. It says how they own a venue, they've got a record label, it's some entertainment company. Going.com, I don't even know what that is, but it got acquired. I assume this guy's a founder, but we don't really know. This guy's early Twitter. We don't know if he was the receptionist or product person or if he's there for a week or who's there for five years. Those are the details that matter on this slide, not how you two look good together and how you've got gangster gangster and you guys are, are, are gangsters and mobsters. Awesome. Here's an interesting one. This is Uber. Uh, way, way, way back in 2009, they raised a $200,000 seed round. Um, they've since raised over $11 billion. Um, and Uber is not good at a lot of things, but this particular slide's pretty good. They gave a pretty clear description of what the possible outcomes are. And this is what the investor, if you put yourself in that mind frame of the investor, what they're thinking about. What's best case scenario, what's worst case scenario, and they painted a pretty clear picture. And guess what? Apparently they got pretty close to the best case scenario, so that's pretty cool. Next, lots of buzzwords. So here is uh, Fitter. Fitter is no longer in business, so we can feel particularly fine making fun of them a little bit. This is a lot of words to describe this company, which is basically a workout app. Um, they're using GPU supercomputing clusters to help figure out what your workout should be. All these databases, I'm surprised they didn't say machine learning, and maybe it was a little too early yet for machine learning buzzwords to get thrown in there. But there's basically a lot of things in here that just don't matter. And this isn't really a summary, right? Again, you could have probably done this in five or six words. Here is uh, Carta, just, it used to be eShares yesterday, but they just renamed themselves, breaking news. Uh, but eShares uh, raised $7 million on this deck. And they probably heard in their slides or in their, in their interviews that, or their pitches that the, everyone was concerned about this company called Solium. So they went and said, here's a slide that just tears apart Sol Solium. No buzzwords, just cut to the chase. Here's this compared to this. Red X's mean they don't have it. Really straightforward. Anyone can understand it. Why would you ever choose Solium? Most people choose eShare. So really, really solid, solid title. I love the Chris title uh, description up at the top. All in all, great slide. Unusual metrics. People get weird about metrics. Metrics are important, but don't just throw metrics in for fun. Like this one. Here is a TAM slide by coming from Love uh, with Food, and their TAM is, look, everyone has to eat so that everyone could be a customer. It's going to be $50 billion. Why? Who knows? How are you going to get that $50 billion? What's your go-to-market strategy? All those things, completely unknown. Have a weird pie chart. Why is there a little green sliver of three billion marketing samples? Who knows? I've already discounted this entire slide. It is useless, it is not valuable, and I just think that you don't know what you're doing. Now, to be fair, the G might have wrapped because the font might have changed before I got the slide, so let's not rip on them too hard for that. Uh, but this slide is not a TAM slide. Give me a story. Help me understand why and how you're going to get to the valuation and get to the dollars that, that you think the investor is going to be interested in. Here's another one, market potential for a company called Mapma. Uh, lots of little micro communities of maps. Cool. How many are there? How many people are interested in this? Are there a lot of people interested in the cheese map of Belgium? You know what? If I was in Belgium, I might be interested. But the reality is, is I don't know how to quantify this. I don't know how many users there are. Give me some way. And if you can't think of it, how am I going to think of it as an investor? And that concerns me. Here's a company called uh, YouTube. They're a streaming company. They were raising $3.5 million back in 2005. And they were pretty confident that they were the best that there was. Uh, and that's cool. But the reality was that they only had about 50,000 video views a day back then. They probably do that in like a millisecond nowadays. Um, but this was, it was not a clear story. Actually, their metrics were pretty flatlined at this point. So they decided not to show any metrics at all. And that's not a good strategy. Yeah, it worked out for YouTube. We're not all YouTube in this room. So think about what those metrics should be. Do not get overly confident, because I suspect that these people knew who they were getting funding from, because this is not a good way to do metric slides. Um, here's another one. Here's a TAM slide. $5 billion total spend. 
Uh, but the reality is, what does that even mean? Is this company going after that $5 billion? It's actually Soundwave is a music analytics company. So if I'm looking at this, I say, wow, they're only about in a $10 million plus market. Not interesting. I'm not going to give you a million dollars to go, get it, go after a $10 million market. Not interesting. So how do you go and tell this story and help me understand what these numbers mean? Don't just put number, numbers on slides that don't make any sense. Here's that eShares Carta thing, uh, a great slide, where again, I can read the top headline, I know why this is valuable. 40% month over month growth, hell yes, every one of us will take that, um, over, uh, especially over the time period that we're talking about. They also aren't afraid to show negative data. It goes down a little bit, it's okay, because they can talk through it, they can understand it, and now you've created a sense of trust with the investor to let them know that this thing is real, and this is a real company that, that I care about. Here's low churn, talk about things like churn. Even if your churn is bad, talk about it, show it, because they're gonna figure out and do diligence anyway. So if you avoid it and don't talk about it, they're gonna discover it later and think that you're lying to them and you're hiding things from them, you're not gonna get the deal and during that due diligence. So be honest, upfront, transparent about what your metrics are and say, if there's good ones, show the good ones. If there are bad ones, address them. Don't leave them for them to find later. Eight, ego flaunting, this is one of the worst. All right, so here you go. This is their team slide, right? Who are they? Who knows? This isn't Tinder, right? Like, let me know what you've done. Why is this important? Who have you, like, why should I give you money to go and build this company? What have you done lately? What have you ever done? All I know is you have a nice smile. That's not good. So this is important. Don't think about, like, no one actually cares what you look like, sorry. They want to know your accomplishments. Think about that when you're doing a team slide. Here's a good one, where I can see little pictures of who they are, but, and it's, sorry it's a little blurry, that, that's my fault. So I can see where they went to school, I can see some of the places that they worked, that's relevant to the company that they're working on. This is valuable, this is powerful, this is at least giving me a hint of why I should trust you and not someone else with these limited amount of funds that I have. Number eight, demo video. How many? <laughs> So many people put demo videos in their pitch decks. It's terrible, it never works. The demo shows up, like imagine you're giving a pitch, like oh, it's time for the demo video. You press play, the audio doesn't work. So you're like oh shit, or it doesn't play at all, or someone decided to web conference in and it doesn't stream right. So many things can go wrong. Even worse, if it does work well and you're all watching this video together, where are you looking? Are you watching the video and smiling and saying like, this is so cool? Are you watching the other people watching the video? That makes them feel awkward. Are you looking at the computer that in front of you? Now you're checking your email. Everyone else feels like they have a pass to go and check their email too. Demo videos suck, never ever do them. Try to do live videos or live demos all the time, every single time. If you have drones, take them in the parking lot and go and show them drones. If, they've, if you must, absolutely can't do a live demo, do screenshots. Use InVision, it will feel like you're clicking and making actual clicks through the demo. If that doesn't work, just show a screenshot, it can't go wrong. Don't do demo videos. Number 10, snooze fest, final one. So many of these things are boring. You're gonna be giving the pitches 100 times, 150 times, don't do that. Make it fun, make it interesting. Well simple, as can as fast as growing online, blah, 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 blah. The only thing that's interesting here that differentiates you from every other investment managing application is that you're in Canada. That's not, I mean, I love Canada, but it's not that interesting. Make it fun, make it interesting, make it engaging, because not only do they have to hear it, and they've heard 100 pitches today alone, but you have to give the same damn thing over and over again. Make it fun for you too. Here's a terrible company that, <laughs> that's okay. LinkedIn, they write $10 million, Series B. Really, really simple deck, right? And yeah, this was a long time ago, 2004, they didn't have computers yet. But the idea was is that you can go and show this, like, it's pretty, it's a good concept, but what a boring slide. And that's not, that's not what this should be all about. When you're thinking about good slides, here's a great example, one of my favorites. I'm, I don't fit this description at all. Millennials are flocking to cities, but they can't afford it. 88% of them live with roommates. But I can see that that's a problem. I can see that if you could somehow help with that 88% of people trying to find a roommate, there's probably a huge opportunity there. It's engaging, it's fun, it's cool fonts, everyone's having a good time in the background. It's not too busy though somehow. It's a great slide, great uses of fonts. And this is compelling. This is what gets me engaged as someone going through your pitch. And hopefully it gets you excited about telling the story over and over and over again. Those are the 10 tenets of a shitty pitch. 
Before you take your screenshot, this is a better one because this is the opposite. This is the opposite version, which is how to make an awesome pitch. Make it easy to understand, readable text, simple and clean, concise. Remember who your audience is. These people don't know who you are and they probably don't have the experience you want them to have. Relax on the buzzwords. Be thoughtful about metrics. Throw your ego out the door, no demo videos, and make it compelling. At the end of the day, hopefully you will raise money, but remember, raising money does not mean you are in any way successful. All it means is you have another breath of air to not be the 85% of companies that don't make it to the next stage of where you're trying to get to. So take it cautiously, take that money and make, be smart with it, and good luck. Thank you very much, have a good night.